alone and it didn't really matter and it, it wasn't that feeling. And I realized that that doesn't build a marriage, that now that I've chosen to be a, a married man, I have to transform parts of that self. And what I realized is that thinking like a monk in a marriage means to be neutral, first of all. Neutral in the sense of when there is an argument or a discussion to keep my steady mindedness, to keep the challenge of being equipoised. The key to do this is when you're arguing with someone, you feel like you're arguing with them. Whereas when a monk mindset comes in, you are now watching the argument as an observer, as an outside mind, and you're able to see, oh, actually, Jay, you're wrong in this argument. Oh, actually, Jay, you, you need to improve this. And Radhi is understanding this from you and you're not communicating clearly. So as soon as you shift into the monk mindset, you're now observing the argument as opposed to thinking you are in the argument. And so that mindset is so powerful because half the time in a relationship, we're just fighting for our egos. And so the monk mindset allows you to take out your ego, look at it from a different perspective, and then approach the same problem. So in so many times in my relationship, I'm able to rise above my ego at times. Sometimes I, f I fail to my ego all the time as well. But the monk mindset allows me to rise above my ego so that I can actually do what's right for me and Ravi as opposed to just keep fighting with her. And there's many ways that... The you have mentioned it in your book also. I think it's uh, the same with all the negative uh, emotions that we feel. You're supposed to treat it also like, as well like that. Like, say, uh, for, for example, in, in the chapter Fear, you spoke about how fear is just an entity. It's like a guest and you should treat it like that. That it's, it's there and you kind of uh, acknowledge it that it's there, but don't really act upon it. Can you, yeah. can you elaborate... Yeah, well, that was a little bit, please. You explained it wonderfully. You're, you're completely on, on the right, exactly what you said, that the challenge is that we look at everything as us. So we say things like, I'm in pain, like I'm stressed, but you are not stressed. You are feeling stressed. It's a feeling. It's an emotion, but you are not that. You are you, but you are feeling stressed. You're experiencing stress, right? When you say, I am cold, you are, your body's getting colder, but you are feeling colder. It's a feeling. It's an emotion. It can be changed because then when you put a coat on, you feel warm. So it's just a feeling. It's not that you are cold or you are warm. It's just for that instant state. And so when you observe yourself in that way, when you, when you become an observer of life, you start to realize that you are not wrong or right. There is just a discussion happening here. And actually, we should be looking towards the same goal. And so the monk mindset really allows me to stop fighting for my ego and start really living for what is right for both of us. And that, that really makes a difference. And I want to ask you some questions as well. You've been doing such a wonderful job uh, asking me so many questions. I want to ask you as well. And you can ask more. But what I've been inspired by you, and I, and I really mean this, inspired by you and many of my friends as well, have discussed that when we noticed that you, you shared my book and I was, I was sharing with people the beautiful review that you wrote of my book on your page and I was so touched and so humbled and I was sharing it with some friends and, and they were following you and we were talking about you. We're so inspired by your deep study, like your desire to deeply study, not just read, not just post an Instagram quote or a caption, but that you're so deeply studying the Bhagavad Gita. You, you studied my book. You were saying that you were making notes and highlighting. And I, I, you know think, okay. I just want to say that the thing, the way you are approaching study and growth is admirable and it's an inspiration. And I really hope that anyone who follows you and, and uh, connects with you learns this wonderful skill from you. So first of all, thank you. And I was going to ask thank you, you so much. how did you cross the... How did you come across the Bhagavad Gita? How did you come across my book? And, and how okay, did you so start discovering your inner path? How did you go on this journey? I you learn. Uh, one day, I think a couple of years back as well, you know, the, the, I'll, I'm just going to be very candid and honest. The kind of, like you speak about the pattern of relationship that we end up choosing and, uh, you know, my father's passing or the fact that, I realized that there was something wrong that I was doing, the kind of people I had surrounded myself with, or, uh, you know, the I, I have been an avid reader since I was very little, but I realized that whether I read The Four Agreements or, uh, you know, autobiography,